Welcome to this recitation on the trace determinant diagram. So here you're asked to label the regions and lines of the trace determinant diagram for a two by two general system written in the form x prime equals ax. And to indicate the stability on your diagram. Um, so here as a reminder, this system is simply a system of uh, two differential equations in vector form x, y, the derivative of x, y equals a, b, c, d, a two by two matrix multiplying the vector x, y, or in, other, in, other, in another form, uh, it would be x dot equal f of x, y, and y dot equals j of x, y, where the t wouldn't appear in f and j here functions, which means that this system would be autonomous, and we're dealing with linear systems. So why don't you pause the video, take a few minutes to remind yourself what the trace determinant diagram is and how to label it, and I'll be right back. Welcome back. Okay, so let's remind ourselves where this trace determinant diagram comes from. So initially, what we saw before was to solve this system, we need to find the eigenvalues of the matrix A. The eigenvalues are solutions of this equation, which can be written in the form lambda square minus trace of lambda plus determinant of A equals to zero. And let's call this D and this T, okay? And the trace of A is just the sum of the diagonals of the matrix, and the determinant is just, in this case for a two by two, A, D minus C, B, okay? So the solutions for, um, let's call them, well, plus and minus, maybe. For this uh, second order polynomial will simply be T, plus of minus the root of our, the determinant of second order polynomial, which is t squared minus 4d. Okay, so the sign of t squared minus 4d is going to determine whether we're dealing with real eigenvalues or imaginary or complex eigenvalues or uh, simply repeated eigenvalues if we have this determinant under the root being equal to zero. Okay. So just as a reminder here, if uh, we have t squared over 4 equals to d, we are in the case, well, this is equal to 0. Lambda plus or minus are the same, and they're just equal to the trace over 2. So the sign of the trace is going to determine whether we have two repeated negative eigenvalues or two repeated positive eigenvalues. Now, if we have that the determinant of the matrix A is larger than t squared over 4, then we are above the curve determined by this equation, which is a parabola that I'll draw in a minute. And in this case, we have the a number un under the root being negative, so we're dealing with complex eigenvalues. And basically, they're just complex conjugate of each other. Okay, And you can notice here that the trace would be also the sum of the two eigenvalues, and basically we would just have two times the real part of lambda plus or minus, okay? Just as a note. And in the third case, where we have that the determinant is below t squared over four, we're in the case where this number under the root is positive, so we're dealing with two real eigenvalues, um, so here I should mention first real, lambda plus lambda minus real. And we can have multiple cases. We can have lambda uh, plus larger than lambda minus both positive. We can have lambda plus less than lambda minus both negative. Or we can have lambda plus positive and lambda minus negative. And each case will give us a different uh, a different behavior of the system. So let's summarize, first summarize this in this following determinant trace diagram, and then we'll start labeling this diagram. Whoops, I should probably keep a little more space here. So this is basically d equal 
t squared over 4 in our trace determinant diagram. I'm going to also erase this part and just keep it in dots, okay? Okay, so in the first case that we looked at, we are in the case where we are right on this parabola, okay? So that's the case where we have lambda plus equal lambda minus. And you can see that if the trace is positive, so if we are, in the, we are on the right hand side of the diagram, then we're going to have two positive eigenvalues that are both real, okay? And they are repeated. So we can have multiple cases. We can have the case where we have a defective matrix, where basically here we only have one eigenvector associated with this repeated eigenvalue, and we have a defective case where we need to come up with a second eigenvector using the generalized eigenvector formula. And I'm not going to write this here, but I'm going to just do the diagram. So for example, we would have one direction V1, where we would have in this case lambda 1 and lambda minus positive. So in the phase space, in Yx, the little diagram would show us that the solution are escaping from the critical point or the equilibrium point. And the second solution that we built would have a dependence in V1 and TV1 plus a second eigenvector V2, also, also directed by the positive eigenvalue. And so we would have a solution, for example, that would look like this, with the solution escaping from the critical point, because again, we are in the case where the two eigenvalues are positive. And so here we could have it in this form, or we can also have it, have the diagram uh, in, in the other direction, and I'll do it in the other direction on the other wing of the, of the, of the uh, diagram. So this is the defective case. Defective node. The other possibility that we could have on this uh, parabola, and I'm going to just do it here, will be the case where we actually have all the, all the direction could be eigenvectors for this, uh, associated with this eigenvalue. And this would be, for example, for a diagonal matrix, in which case all the directions would be escaping, all the trajectories would be escaping from the critical point. And this would be a star. Obviously here we are in the unstable case for the defective node, and we are also in the unstable case for the star because all the solutions are escaping and basically going away. So if I start at the equilibrium, the solution, and I perturb it a little bit, the solutions would want to escape from that equilibrium point. Okay, so on the other side here, it would be exactly the same structure, except that I would have stability because the trace is negative. So I would have uh, asymptotically stable star. Why asymptotically? Because basically it's when t goes to infinity that the trajectories reach the critical point. Okay? And this is again in the phase space yx diagram. For the defective node, we would have this time, for example, direction v1 attracting the solutions, the ray v1, and the, the tra new trajectory that we will be uh, constructing based on v1 would again we be, be dv1 plus v2, a generalized eigenvector. Both of them would uh, give us solutions that convert toward the equilibrium because the two eigenvalues here are negative. And so we have that for large time, the solution follows v1, and for uh, large time, minus infinity it follows v1, and for plus infinity it's going toward the equilibrium point, it also follows v1. So the solutions would have to look like this, for example. And this would be asymptotically stable defective node. Okay, so we're done with this, uh, with the points on the parabola. So now let's look at the other points, and I'll go maybe a bit less in the details. Um, so for the the case where we have the determinant larger than t squared over 4, so we are just above this parabola now, we have the case uh, where we have two complex eigenvalues. There are two complex conjugates. 
So let's assume that we can then just expand our, our solution and write it in terms of the exponential, in terms of the real part of the eigenvalue. So it would be determined, again, the trace will give us the sign of the real part of the eigenvalue, multiplying a cosine and a sine. So we have something that is rotating uh, in, the, in phase space, because we have basically a periodicity. But the distance to the critical point is changing, and it's either growing if we have a positive real part for our eigenvalues, so if we are on this side, or decaying uh, if we are on the left side of the diagram. So that gives us typically spirals. So for example, that would be a spiral going toward zero, uh, toward the equilibrium point in phase space. And here, we would be in the case where we have instability due to the fact that the real part of the eigenvalue determining the stability is positive. And so the solution of the trajectories escape from the critical point. And similarly here, we could have the, exam, the same structure, but I'm just going to draw it in another direction, where here we would have stability. Oops, they should not cross. This is not the right way to draw this. Oop. And it would be going toward the critical point. So here, just a quick note, you can have this trajectory being drawn this way. So here we have basically a, a clockwise motion, but we could also have it be drawn in the other way for both cases, giving us another, another uh, direction of rotation in phase space. And the direction that you choose will be determined by uh, the lowest left entry of your matrix A, and I will just explain quickly how, how we do that. Okay, so we have basically here unstable spiral mode, and here it's again asymptotically stable uh, spiral. So what happens now if we are in this case, we're still above the parabola, so we have still complex, um, complex uh, eigenvalues. However, we have now the fact that the trace is equal to zero, which means that the eigenvalues don't have any real part. So basically we have pure oscillation, and in, in the phase space that corresponds to closed trajectories that could be circles or ellipses, basically. And so, for example, we would have something of this form that would be called a center. And here, again, you can have either counterclockwise or a clockwise rotation in phase space, depending on uh, the, the signs of the entries of your matrix. So, uh, one thing I want to note is that here, the stability for the center is simply, we say that it's simply stable and not asymptotically stable because the solution never actually reaches the, the uh, critical point but stays in the region around the critical point. So we're left with a few other cases that are now all below the parabola. And for that, we just have real eigenvalues, okay? So let's look at the case where the eigenvalues have two different signs. So for that, we have to have the determinant being negative. So it's it, this whole lower part of the diagram, because the determinant is the product of the two eigenvalues. So if they have different signs, we're in this region. So in this case, we could have, for example, uh, one eigenvalue with associated eigenvector v1 being negative. So the trajectories on, along this ray would be going toward the equilibrium point. And then, um, and then another, the other eigenvalue would be positive. So for example, lambda 2 here would correspond to this other uh, eigenvector uh, v2. And so here, we would have solutions that would be close to v1 when we're coming, for example, from minus infinity, approaching the critical point, and then going back toward uh, uh, approaching v2 when we go at t plus infinity, for example. And so it gives us pseudo hyperbola form here of this form. And this is said to be unstable because all the solutions 
uh, do not go to the critical point, but we have some stable manifolds. For example, the V1, if we start on this ray, we would be going toward the critical point, and if we start the critical point itself, it would stay in the critical point. But it is unstable. So now what happened in these two different regions to finish? So in these two different regions, and I'm going to have a little bit more space here. Oh, yeah, thank you. And this would be a saddle, and it's just because of the shape. So I'm going to just add a little bit of space here so that we can complete the diagram. So we are be basically looking at the regions uh, here in the, in the wedge where we are below the parabola. And I'm looking for another color, but maybe I'll just use white. OK, so now we are in the case where we would have two eigenvalues, both real, so no oscillation, but let's say both positive because we're basically on, this, on the region where the trace is positive, OK? So let's say that we have one ray v1, one ray v2. The trajectories are going away from the critical point because the two eigenvalues are positive, OK? And now, what, what do the other trajectories do? Where they follow, uh, so for example, they would be following v2, and I'm going to explain how? So here we're in the case where obviously we're unstable because, again, the solution, the trajectories are going away from the critical point. And here, how do you pick uh, which uh, ray do you follow when you get closer to the critical point? Where in this case, we would be in the situation where we have lambda 2, uh, lambda 2 smaller than lambda 1 larger than 0. So basically, the lambda 2 that is the closer to zero, and that's also the case for the positive and the negative uh, eigenvalues, is the one that determines the solution closer to the critical point, and the larger in absolute value eigenvalue uh, and its ray then determines the behavior. Um, uh, determines the behavior. Oh, sorry, there's a mistake here. It should be lambda one. I said I said it, but I think I wrote it reversely. Yeah, the smaller the eigenvalue closer to zero is the one that determines the behavior at zero. So here when we're going to infinity, the larger eigenvalue lambda 2 will determine the behavior and the trajectories will become more and more parallel to v2. So what happened on this side, then it would be exactly the same diagram, and I'm just going to do it similarly with the same, let's say, v2 here, except that we would have our uh, direction going, trajectory is going toward the critical point. And the trajectories here again would be closer to V1, so which means that we would have a case where we have lambda 1 less than 0 and larger than lambda 2. So that finishes roughly the diagram. I didn't detail a few borderline regions, for example, the region where the determinant equals to zero, and uh, we will discuss that in, a, in another recitation, and the case also at which uh, the determinant and the trace are equal to zero. So we'll detail that also, but try to uh, think about it to complete the diagram. Okay, so the key points here were to remember what is the determinant trace diagram, how to interpret uh, the, how to basically deduce the nature of the eigenvalues based on T and D, their sign, and where to place uh, the different structures on this determinant trace diagram. And that ends this recitation.